Ukrainian-born architect and social designer based in the Netherlands. Currently, she is, uh, or in fact, she was um, uh, in residence or researcher at the Jan van Eyck Academy uh, in Maastricht. She is interested in exploring uh, the, the house as a place for private domesticities and is looking into how that spatial restraints and segregations are influencing our everyday life. Ladies and gentlemen, Dasha Chapenko. Uh, hey everyone, uh, so uh, on the left it's me again. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a project I was working about, laboratory. Uh, I can't control it somehow. Oh, okay. Uh, and laboratory stands uh, for two words, uh, love and uh, laboratory. Uh, that's uh, how my research was uh, looking uh, throughout the whole process. Um, so it had some uh, static facts, but also lots of uh, subjective things. Uh, with my personal life and it uh, throughout the whole year go along well together but if you put it in a proper system you would see basically a scheme that could be talked about uh, so yeah what is actually laboratory for me laboratory was a special exploration platform that both theoretically and physically questioned and analyzed mutually defined connections of domestic spaces and romantic uh, multi-human relationships that were defined uh, and defined by these spaces. Uh, I approached, uh, my goal was to create a kind of a testing environment, laboratory, uh, that um, had a hardware and a software. The hardware of the process was uh, domesticity, uh, which was basically represented by the physical uh, embodiment of the space. And uh, the question I was interested in was uh, how would the new ways uh, of exploring, analyzing, producing, also destroying and speculating about domesticity. And then I decided that uh, throughout this year, I'm not actually interested in producing, but rather in exploring and finding uh, new ways uh, of this domesticity. And uh, the aspects of domestic domesticity I was particularly interested in uh, was uh, the people, and uh, more specifically, the relationships that were shaped by uh, inhabitants people, humans, but also non-humans that occupied these environments. Uh, yeah, so um, we know that uh, environments are standardized and these uh, standardized environments really uh, define relationships that uh, occur there. So uh, even now it's already challenged, but uh, lots of relationships that emerge are not, not talked through. Uh, so for many years, the normative structure of a household was largely been the single family household governed by heterosexual relationships with men as the head of the household and a woman as a caretaker. However, once other figures of masculinity and femininity or neither or of above enter the scene, both the norm of a unified subject and domesticity are challenged. Um, so this is a collection of uh, DVG images that are used for architectural representation uh, uh, of uh, family. So as you see, it's a heteronormative couple which presents uh, uh, a male and a female also dressed accordingly. Uh, and this is a collection of uh, DVG uh, beds uh, that um, are offered for architects to use in their plans. And as you can see, most of them are uh, double-sided beds with um, two uh, bed tables next to each other. So uh, I was curious how, uh, what kind of other family situations are there? And uh, the, uh, relationship, the, the relationship model which was uh, already there was uh, polyamory. It's not speculative, it's already there. So space-wise, I started to research in uh, uh, models uh, that were already experienced uh, within history. In that case, it's like, a, a history of uh, Mormons and how their lifestyle uh, influences uh, the domestic space and the architecture they live in. And then that for me was a really striking example of how really the whole uh, spatial planning is defined by the family. So here you can see uh, 
a house uh, of uh, a man and uh, his uh, wives. So uh, the houses were shaped by these modules and each wife was owning a module. Um, yes, yeah, this is a house of uh, uh, Mr. Watt and his three wives, uh, Margaret Watt, Susan Watt and Emma Watt. And uh, this is another example uh, and they are all located in uh, Uta in Salt Lake City. So you can see that there's only one common space and the rest space are really uh, separated for, uh, for wives. And this is uh, a typical example of a Maasai settlement. And it talks more of uh, urban planning where uh, uh, what you can see here, it's a village and uh, where you see the pink dots, these are the entrances where husbands uh, entered, each of the husbands had a separate entrance and then uh, the big black spots uh, with numbers are uh, houses of their wives and these houses were located from uh, left to the right and then all the husbands uh, during the week they started from left to right to, to come to, to their wives so that uh, in fact it, uh, affected not only the uh, housing but also the urban planning. So. But the software of the research of laboratory was the aspect of the re romantic relationships. Uh, so not only humans, not only polyamory, but I was also interested in what, what goes beyond and what might occur in this not, uh, not easy future. So uh, how would the house look if uh, we would uh, have romantic relationships with objects. How would uh, the domestic environment look like if we would have love with uh, plants, with artificial intelligence? What would this artificial intelligence in that case be embodied in, in holograms or in small uh, objects or in our phones or not phones? Uh, how would uh, romantic relationships with animals look like? Uh, so, um, I approached that uh, through case studies. One of the case studies I did was a collaboration with uh, uh, two other designers, which was also a romantic relationship where we um, moved in together and started to test the standard environment in terms of uh, uh, sizes of the rooms, uh, standard uh, furniture items, and how they uh, accommodate our life, our routine, and what uh, would we need to change. And uh, as a response to that, we uh, created a, a series of uh, most common IKEA items that are created for a use of two, and uh, we made them for a use of uh, three. Um, then the other uh, very important parameter of the research was uh, to challenge the romantic beliefs and concepts which are present uh, throughout the uh, romantic discourse and see how, how would they influence uh, the space. So I started to collect uh, different romantic scenes from different media uh, which happen uh, in a certain uh, part of space or object. So I took uh, elements of uh, architecture such as uh, doors, fireplaces, uh, roof corridors, uh, balcony staircases. And here it's an example of a balcony and uh, like a romantic scene which happens there. And my question was uh, how much is a romantic scene happening uh, because of the real feeling and how much the actual architectural element has an influence on that. Because we all know uh, the example of Romeo and Juliet, how uh, the balcony is really a symbol of that and how many people go to that specific place to make a kiss and then how how much is it actually about the kiss or is it uh, the balcony uh, itself. So this is a, a scene from the West Side Story where, where I try to kind of trace all the actions and movements of the heroes to see uh, how does the balcony play part in that to, to, to which extent. Um, my theoretical research was uh, somewhere in between um, critical scholar literature, but also something really esoteric, like uh, pagan traditions in polyamory. And I was always trying to find this balance between a uh, pragmatic way of designing, but also this emotional aspect as it has to do with relationships, which was essential. Um, to challenge and to find uh, the solution of approaching this project, I, I decided to use props that would uh, basically uh, 
I decided to go away uh, from the uh, objects uh, we know and that we use every day and to uh, create different probes that would unlearn us from old behavior with objects and would uh, uh, teach us something new. Because, for example, in the case with this uh, polyamorous scenario, the question that we asked was, uh, if from our childhood we would know, we would see the bed for four people or for five people, would that, would that influence on our choice of partners? Because in our head, we would have a completely different uh, idea of, um, of love. Uh, Probe-wise, um, so this is a, a scene from a, a movie called Being John Malkovich, and this is a floor seven and a half which was uh, present there. And somehow, actually, this movie really, as I figured out later, goes along pretty well with, uh, with my whole research. So it causes this discomfort. So I, I somehow believe that through this discomfort and limitation, you can come up with uh, new solutions and new ideas for, um, for, for life. So I was starting to uh, deconstruct all the elements of uh, contacting with uh, physical objects and environments and see what comes. And then I discovered this, then <laughs> the whole uh, flow of my project changed when I discovered this uh, soft uh, foamy material and also a way to, to actually work and shape it. And uh, it's a uh, uh, soft polyurethane foam uh, and uh, wooden packs that I was planning to shape objects out, out of it. Uh, and then uh, when I uh, did it, I it started really crazy because I uh, started to create lots of lots of elements and to see what uh, what comes next. So uh, from after creating all these props, I started to do like testing rounds with different people to see how to activate them. Um, so uh, the uh, the thing I did it. it uh, and the methodology which I thought might be helpful and would uh, uh, help me to move further was to uh, review uh, unspoken bodily structures in alternative relationships, starting from polyamory, but also to more speculative relationships. And I uh, was given people roles and cards and uh, was uh, in a scenario of a certain uh, untypical relationship that uh, they were trying to recreate. And then uh, I was asking them to uh, show the specific uh, case from this relationship uh, using the props. So this was the for, and then I was tracing that with a specific um, form. So then uh, we all traveled to Copenhagen, uh, which I, and the location which all the objects were presented was a library. So uh, as you see on the photos, it worked more as a uh, showing scenes and a playground, which it was supposed to be, but, uh, Anyways, anyways, was useful. So um, that was after that, uh, and at, at, at that point, I my interest uh, <coughs> get really, really, really wide, and I sought to go from this uh, really kind of critical and analytical approach to more emotional one, and just to let it go and to try try different methods uh, of work with it, and then somehow. I was all over the place with some facts from there, 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 there. So it looked, looked like that. And there <laughs> uh, it came a final moment from for, for the presentation when it was supposed to be something, something was, was supposed to be on the table. And I realized that actually it's really hard to make a choice. And it would be amazing for me to find a method to show uh, this whole love because I, I throughout, throughout this year, I started to believe that the love of future is uh, love of, uh, of, all, of all these elements. And it would be really challenging, but also nice to show this uh, whole love of all creatures, objects, uh, and elements as such. And then I was uh, really lucky to uh, be introduced to Daniel Kramer, who is a theater actor, but also a relationship coach and uh, coach in general. And uh, also by chance, he was uh, interested by uh, exactly the same topic. So it was a, a great opportunity for me to uh, reactivate the foam props and to uh, try to create a, a new narrative with, um, with them. So what was presented um, on the last uh, stage in Berlin was a big uh, space, a big map, 
which uh, showed uh, a variety of uh, relationship uh, scenarios which would involve um, humans, uh, animals, objects, and uh, uh, we would uh, perform uh, these scenarios and uh, show the emotions which uh, occurred within a certain uh, scenario or relationship using this foam props. So the main goal of that was to um, find uh, emotions within a uh, typical relationship and to see how they be can be transfer transferred in space through the body with, our, with, with, with the help of uh, our own body. So that's uh, how it looked like. And actually, when putting together this presentation, I realized that <laughs> it actually goes, ago goes along really well with uh, being John Malkovich again, which uh, talks about uh, this uh, variety of uh, uh, variety of uh, selves in one human, uh, which also talks about relationships because a contemporary human has uh, numerous of things going on in uh, in one's head, but the uh, standard environment uh, goes along, in my in my opinion, only uh, with this uh, one relationship scenario. And how how the question was how would the apartment of the future look like that could host and that could find place to transform this all multiple emotions that. Um, uh, one human holds in his hands. And these multiple relationships, no matter how physical or how real they are, but even if they are in, um, in, in one's head. Uh, yeah, these are also two, two one, uh, the one picture from, uh, from the performance and one from being John Malkovich movie, which I just put like five minutes ago because it just uh, came to my mind that it really go um, the, the same way. Yeah, some, some of the process. I guess. Thank you, Dasha. <laughs> Overwhelmed by so much love. Um, <coughs> I'm curious to hear uh, some questions. Everybody is flabbergasted. Overwhelmed. Yeah, <laughs> you too. Um, yes, Camila. So what, um, what was your intention when you started creating these uh, foam shapes? What, what were you expecting people to do with it? What was the final intention, if you had an intention? Yeah, yeah, no, my, my final intention was to uh, deconstruct our bodily movements, which are shaped by the way we interact with the objects uh, we know and to find out a new uh, bodily behavior. So it's sort of, yeah, uh, almost like a choreographic exercise? Uh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. It but ended then up in a ca choreography. Yeah, it ended up as a really choreography. But then uh, the idea was to, to basically see how this choreography evolved. That's why uh, I wanted to do it with, uh, with other people. You. Can you explain a little bit about this choreography that happened in that space? Because you didn't mm. really elaborate it there. You showed some pictures, but what did you do together with the performer, Daniel, on the stage and with these objects of foam? Uh, so we had uh, five scenarios which were uh, talking about, th which were showing, uh, we, we were two of us, and we were representing uh, different romantic relationships of uh, two humans, uh, of a human and an animal, of three humans, of uh, a male and a female, of a male and a male. So uh, uh, it was supposed to be improvised, but uh, the thing we showed there was, uh, was only five. And then uh, with the foam elements we had there, we were trying to make kind of a sculpture which was uh, showing a specific element of, uh, of a relationship. Can can you give a, a very specific example? Mm, yeah, so we started basically to to make it clear with a uh, with three uh, with two table with two chairs uh, and a table, and then we were sitting. Uh, then he was presenting a male, and I was presenting a female, and then we had this uh, conversation in a low tones, and we were talking about domesticity, and it was really clear that this way. Of sitting really brings this uh, this type of uh, of discussion, for example. 
Uh, but can you also explain a little bit about language? Because you also used language in the performance itself. Oh yeah, it seems so that you were only using materials and, and a certain grid to position each other, but it was also words. Yeah, yeah, we, we created a, a specific language that we that both of us understood and we were given each uh, each other instructions based on the feelings that would come from a certain scenario. So we were instructing each other and the one who uh, was instructed was using the elements to uh, to create a, a specific thing. What did you learn from this uh, five uh, little experiments? Well, what uh, what I learned that it needs to I didn't really achieve uh, uh, a goal to make it a laboratory that it was extremely hard to to take tests out of it. What uh, because in in all the cases it turned out to be more more theatrical than uh, um, than laboratory than laborat laboratorical and uh, testical. Um, that that was a thing for me to to note uh, also. That's fine. Yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things, but. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Dasha. <laughs> I look, want to look what the oh yeah. we the mates with love. The or the over overwhelming of love yeah. by the form objects. You can imagine it's nice to feel feelings for everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was a stupid joke with the R. Are you breaking up with me? <laughs> stupid joke. Uh, you wanted romance, so I brought a balcony. <laughs> I, I find <laughs> it I intriguing that, that some objects are in indeed linked with uh, ideas of love. I think it's very very funny, but also crazy. Then you had a polyamory with the design. Yeah, could be a great illustration, but yeah. <coughs> <coughs> so yes. and yeah, this okay. is a uh, representation of her uh, research. So what she showed, I, I love your drawings strip too. Thank you, this is everything. Yeah, she was in fact uh, jealous on you. Yeah. Like uh, Dasha was this whole afternoon, m also during the evaluation that we had, making kind of similar drawings it's like you. So you thing. should really, I don't say make love together, no, but no, at no. least <laughs> meet up. Uh, yes. I'm looking forward Thank to it. Thank you, uh, Wide, and uh, everybody. Um,